In this video we learn how to model miniature boathouses and a harbor lighthouse. Hello and welcome! Today we're going to model details for you know a small, a small boat type marina or harbor. So we're going to do uh, boathouses not that big type boathouse where you run in the entire boat, but small like storage sheds to you know, put the fishing rods and fishing nets and things like that. I've seen these at least here in Europe. I haven't been over to US, so I don't know uh, if you use this type of, of, of sheds there, but here they're very typical and only have different colors depending on what, what area you're, you're in. We're also going to make a harbor lighthouse. Uh, a a lighthouse in the harbor is uh, not typically what you think of when you think of a, a lighthouse. It's more a, a simple device with a, a sign and a, a lamp, which, you know, the two lamps align, should be aligned to guide the way into the harbor during night. So that's what we're going to do, plus more. So let's get to it. So this is what the boathouse panel look like and for this I'm selecting a sheet from a northeastern scale lumber which is the HO scale equivalent to that panel. I've also purchased some doors from northeastern. They're not perfect to the prototype but good enough. Let's start by cutting the panel. I've measured the houses. They're about 3 by 3 meters which is 10 by 10 feet. And the HO scale equivalent to that is about 34 millimeters. So I'm cutting now the, the front and the rear sides of these sheds. Then I'm going to divide them into the individual sheds to simplify the cutout of the angles for the roof sections. So we're doing that. I'm using a razor blade with one side to do all this cutting. I get a lot of question on why I'm using that rather than a hobby knife. And the reason is that the blade is thinner. So it's easier to cut through um, this type of materials. Then with a one template made, I saw the rest of them. It's uh, faster and gets more accurate. Then I make a pile of them and I grind or sand until they get exactly the same, all of them. Now it's time to work on those doors. As said, they're not perfect. We have to cut away the window on top of the door. The window itself on the door has also fewer bars than the sheds you just saw on, on the prototypic pictures from the Swedish West Coast. But hey, these sheds can come in many different variants and most of them do not even have a window. So this is uh, it's uh, definitely good enough. All right, now the door is ready. All we need to do now is to paint it. It's uh, 10 millimeters wide and 23.5 tall. So now we're gonna make the cut out. I first mark the position on piece of panel before I make the actual cutting and then I cut it out using this razor blade. Now let's see if it fits. Yeah, great. There's a bit of overlap on the sashes around the door too, so it's not that critical. It looks good. I have room for four of these shreds in my harbor, so I will make four of them like this. Next up is to sand the four corner pieces with 45 degrees angle. For this I use a piece of... this is a, some kind of tabletop back in the days before I cut it in parts but it's very hard and it's uh, exactly 90 degrees so it's uh, easy to work with even though I'm sanding at 45 degrees here 
it's easy to get the angles right if you have a, a template or a piece of wood like this. And it's just to glue the different walls together so it once again forms a row of sheds like this. I use a steel scale to align them to make sure that they are perfectly straight. And this is what it looks like when the glue has dried. Now we're gonna paint. For my area I use uh, acrylic red. I mix that with a portion of burnt umber brown to get what we call a falu röd. These type of sheds are also commonly painted in white then with the blue doors and blue corners. So that's an alternative if you don't want this red style. So let's paint the panel here. I'm using a, a wide soft brush for this. And I paint it twice. Put some weight on to prevent it from bending. Then it's time to paint the edges and the doors. For this I use the edges will be one by four inch scale lumber from northeastern scale lumber and i will paint this using white acrylic paint a good thing could be also to use a tiny tiny drop of yellow to you know make the color tone of the white a bit softer or warmer than this uh, acrylic white which is a very hard and cold white so i started out by paint brushing the doors. It turned out that it was hard to get the uniform distribution of the paint over the surface of the door without ruining the pattern or the details in the door. So I ended up using airbrush and sprayed the doors. Then I got them really nicely white. The panels, the sashes, I paint them in, in bunches of four or five like this over the tray with paint. That's efficient. It also, they also get partially painted on the back side then. Let's now make the floor inside this row of sheds. I measured the floor size to be 12.6 times 3 centimeters. The floor itself is made from 1.5 mm thick balsa sheet. I will not glue the floor at the very bottom of the wall ends. That is to allow for some irregularities on the surface where I will place this row of sheds without getting gaps around it. So it's a trick that could be used on any building really which you're scratch building like this. I glue the pieces together using PVA glue or some similar glue. Elmer construction is one possible glue too. A drop in each corner with facet glue holds it all in place until the PVA glue has dried. The window in the door is fixed also using same type PVA glue, wood glue. I just remove it, most of it, so I don't have it floating out on the window like that. All right, great. Then it's time to glue the doors in place in the front wall of the row of sheds here. So I just slide them in place. Yeah, great. And then I'm ready to glue also the front row into place. Leave that to dry now properly and meanwhile we can cut out the roof sections. I'm first cutting out the middle sections of the roof. The roof is 40 millimeter wide and these sections are 20 millimeters long. The edge sections, the sections towards the short end of this um, shed will be 25 millimeters since they are sticking out on each end like this. So I'm placing them just to check that I got the dimensions right. And then it's just to glue them in place. And once the glue has dried, it's possible to sand the surface smooth. Because on top of this uh, balsa, we will glue the texture of tiles, tiles roof. So then the surface needs to be somewhat level. 
The pattern of tiles comes from a plastic sheet I bought and put uh, some PVA glue on top of that to make a molding of it. This uh, wood glue or construction glue sheet of tiles is uh, very easy to work with because it's uh, soft and thin and if you heat it then the fibers in this material gets really soft again so you know if you feel that it's cracking or something you need to bend it around something then this is the solution for that i have a separate tutorial on how to mold this type of roof i'm putting up a link in the upper upper right hand corner to that video now otherwise it's just to cut out the pieces of this uh, glue roof and glue it in place using the same type of construction glue. Just make sure that you get the pattern in the right direction. Apply glue over the entire roof like this and then spread it using a paintbrush. I typically just glue a few sections at a time. So I'm starting with these three. Make sure to get the proper fit between the different parts. When these three are in place, then I can spread the glue for the rest and glue them in place as well. Now let's paint. I'm using that uh, traditional orange tile. This is uh, Humbrol paint number 82, which is uh, orange. I have a rule of thumb to paint water-based surfaces, like this is a construction glue, which dissolves with water. And I typically paint that using oil paints. Trim away balsa roof edge to make the roof edge look thinner. Let's now cut and glue the roof edge in place. For this I use also northeastern scale lumber. This is 2 by 8 inches to give it a bit more width than the corners of the building. And just gluing those in place as well using PVA glue or wood glue. The version of that I'm using here is a Noch laser cut adhesive, which uh, really is uh, probably the same thing, but I really like the bottle. Last action now on the row of sheds is to glue the edges in place. They also get cut and glued. One detail which caught my attention was the life boy, the life saver, the orange and white one. It will be modeled from a M3 flat washer onto which I pour glue, same laser cut adhesive. Then I hold it upside down and dry it over a hair dryer. The rope, which is uh, around it, will be just copper thread. So I'm winding a few rounds with copper thread on something almost round like this and I put more glue on the back side and put that piece of copper wire in place. Now I put the entire creation onto a piece of sticky rubber and paint it with Humbrol Matte 34 white. On top of that orange acrylic and black dots for the letters. Next up is that sign and guiding light for entering the harbor at night. So this is what it looks like. It's a construction in wood with a lamp on top. For this I use the same type of northeastern scale lumber, 1 inch by 4, which I've previously already painted white. I glue it together using that same type of noch glue and then when dry I just cut the piece triangular. The lamp itself will be made from a piece of can. 
This is an excellent Carlsberg beer can, which I cut out a small piece from like this and then I just cut the corners round, bend it. And inside this uh, beer can piece, uh, we will put a tiny surface mount LED. See, it's uh, ultra tiny. It's a bit tricky to solder on these and I often get questions of how to do that. I put it on a piece of sticky rubber, have a sponge, wet your sponge with uh, isopropanol water mix. I typically have nine parts water and one part isopropanol so the tip gets properly clean. Now just apply a tiny amount of solder tin to the pads. Isolated copper wires comes with a coating of something like varnish. The thinner dimensions does not need to be removed because that goes away when you solder onto it. Whilst this is a bit thicker thread and then you need to remove the varnish ahead of tinning it or soldering it to whatever you're soldering it to. So I'm tinning it first and then soldering it into place. You see here that the tin looks a bit bubbly. That's because the temperature is too high. So if you see that, decrease temperature if you can. This uh, tiny LED will be fixed into place onto the beer can using double side adhesive tape. Cut a suitable piece from the larger pad and put it into place using a tweezer. Then it's just to fit the LED on top and push it into that pillow of adhesive. Now it's a good time to try that the LED actually works still after all the handling. Then I put a drop of water effect. That's no 60872. This is uh, the reason for this is to get uh, the look of a water clear surface of this uh, lantern. The wire itself will be painted with the Humbrol Matte Black 33. This paint both works as an isolator, but also of course makes the cable black. The sign and the lantern will be placed onto a pole. I make that from a barbecue stick from bamboo. I sand it slightly so it gets a smooth surface. Paint it in brown. And then I just glue the sign and the lantern in place using fast set glue. When dry, I also fix the cables along the rod or the pole using fast set glue. At this point, I'm testing it again just to make sure that it's still working after all this gluing and painting, and it does. Now, the only thing we need to do is to paint this sign in orange paint like that. Now we have completed all of the parts we intended to build in this tutorial. All that remains now is some weathering. I'm starting with some black diluted or thinned acrylic paint on top of the roof. Wipe most of that away using a paper towel. And then leave that to dry a few minutes while you're mixing a light brown paint, which consists from burnt umber and white. This uh, paint will be used both to make streaks along the walls of the sheds as well as on the roof itself and I will also use this to get a bit of weathered look on the roof. If you get too much, just smear it out with your fingers like this. I also give this uh, sign a bit of this light brown paint. Now it's just to glue it all in place. With the building in place, I drill holes for street lights, which I fix with the fast set glue. 
also make the hole for that uh, harbor lighthouse or lantern. Feed the cables through and then glue it in place using fast set glue. I also have to have this guy who carries the fuel to the boat, otherwise we'll get nowhere. And a couple of beers as well. After the beer, sir, this detail may come in handy. The lifesaver. Now we'll give in our uh, small boat marina some basic detailing with the, with the storage sheds and things like that. A lot more can be added like holders for fishing nets and, and all those, those kind of things. So there might be more coming up in the, in this, uh, say on this same topic. Uh, if you have any questions at all about materials or, or methods or anything, just post them in the comment field below and I'll try to respond to them as soon as possible. If this video helps you with your hobby, please remember that this is all made possible because a few of you viewers are supporting the channel. So please think of this as a low cost uh, magazine subscription and get over to Patreon and set up a support account there from like $1 per month. Or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe and enable the little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya!